But we're still talking about coronavirus and the effects it's had on schools across the country, especially after the president uh, directed all final year students um, at the various levels and also uh, second year gold track students of the senior high schools to return to school to complete the syllabus and of course get ready for their final exams. There have been calls for the shutdown of these schools, especially the senior high schools, as a result uh, of some cases that have been recorded in some of these institutions. Uh, just about a week ago, Akara Girl Senior High School recorded six cases amongst students, and also uh, a teacher was tested positive as well as his spouse. Now, a week down the line, an official statement has been put out by the Ghana Education Service and, of course, by the Ghana Health Service. And you'd realize earlier that Etonam, along with Della, had a conversation about the situation at the Accra Girls Senior High School, where the Ghana Education Service and GHS have confirmed 55 students testing positive to the virus out of about 314 students who were contact traced following the six who tested positive last week. Now, just a few days after these six students tested positive, there was also uh, a situation at the KNUST Senior High School where a student, unfortunately, passed on, um, you know, due to some pains. We're not sure what exactly caused his death, whether it is ulcer or it could have been as a result of COVID-19. But we just want to find out what the situation is like in the Ashanti region, especially since the Ghana Education Service also confirmed that other schools across the country have also uh, recorded some sporadic cases. And so Emmanuel Evans Incum, uh, William Evans Incum, pardon me, is joining us from the Ashanti region. Good morning, William. Good morning, Bella. How are you? Well, it's a raining morning. But I can say we cannot complain. Absolutely. But what is the atmosphere like in the Ashanti region, especially after the Ghana Education Service and the Ghana Health Service released that statement confirming that 55 students have tested positive at Accra Girls uh, Senior High School and some schools may have recorded cases across the country as well? Well, there is a wave of fear in some of the senior high school that I visited this morning and now they even taken extra precautionary measures uh, against uh, anybody who would want to access any of these um, schools. Remember, even proud to their coming, the president has said that nobody will be allowed um, access to any of these uh, senior high schools because of COVID-19. But mm -hmm. last week, uh, that move by the national youth organizer of the NPP and of course the Ashanti regional organizer or um, secretary of the NDC uh, sent a very bad signal. Mm. I mean, if you um, listen to the feedback from parents and other stakeholders, people were not happy that they used the uh, voters registration exercise to invade the schools against the directive of the, of the president. Uh, president. Yeah. But I can tell you that since, since, since that particular development, now um, there, there is strict, I mean, accessing these schools, one will say you not know, have it easy, especially when you're not a student or when you are not a student or a yeah. teacher, you don't have anything doing there. Um, nobody is, 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 can be trusted as far as COVID-19 is concerned. So um, now these schools or senior high schools are no-go area for anybody, not even a parent. Um, so I can tell you that, yes, wave of fear within the most um, the senior high schools and then strict adherence to the safety protocols and also um, very, very strict when it comes to accessibility so that is what i can tell you as far okay. as the various senior high schools in the ashanti region is concerned you're saying that security has increased and so that that means that you possibly tried entering some of these schools and they didn't per permit you absolutely even uh kumasi anglican senior high school i was only there i was there last friday uh, getting access to the place i had to go through some level of one would say a long questions and all mm. of that but well we managed to convince the headmaster because we we told them that we are here because of the i mean voter registration exercise and we are we have to get in so we can also report accurately mm. to our cherished viewers and listeners and that was the reason why we were allowed in today i went there and it was a no-no for me because mm. now i cannot even use the voter registration as a bait as a bait for that because uh, there's no exercise going on there. So the question is, 
why do you want to get access to the school? Especially mm. when we don't even know your status as to whether you're positive or otherwise. And I can tell you that the development from the Accra Girls Senior High School has even heightened fear in the Ashanti region. So for now, if you're not a student, if you're not uh, a teacher who probably has a tenable reason for accessing any of the senior high school, just forget it. Mm. Is there a definite figure as to how many schools in the Ashanti region have recorded COVID-19 cases? Well, so since the last update from the Ashanti Regional Directorate of Ghana Health Service, we know that three students um, had recorded COVID-19 in the uh, Wesley High School in Konongo. You know, that was the first place a student um, um, was uh, reported to have recorded COVID-19. And so far, since the last update, we mm. know of three. We're still waiting because there has been some uh, updates with mm. regards to the regional figures. Yeah. When we heard that the figure in the Ashanti region was around 4,000, now we are counting over 5,100 5, yeah. cases of COVID-19. But we are still waiting for the breakdown from the Ashanti regional director. So maybe in the course of the day, we should get that breakdown. We're just hoping that there hasn't been increase in figures as far as students I um, mean uh, 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 one is the infection is concerned mm, okay well William Evans Nkum, thank you so much and we hope that by then we'll have some updates from you and so uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you thank you very much and so that's William Evans Nkum from the Ashanti region he's our correspondent he's been updating us on what's been happening in the Ashanti region with regards to everything especially COVID-19 and uh, later we'll see if we can cross over but now let's have a conversation with Dr. Emmanuel Amankra now he is the lead at the LECMA um, isolation center and basically we want to find out looking at um, the cases that we're recording across the country is it even again putting morphine in people to the extent that they would rather not go and get tested even if they are showing signs and symptoms of COVID-19. So let's cross over to him. Uh, he joins us via Skype on this side. Good morning, Doc. Dr. Manuel Amanka, and he's joining us via Zoom, by the way. Hello, Doc. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. We miss you in the studio, but it's fine. As long as we can have you, um, you know, join us online as well. But how has the situation been so far? Looking at the numbers, the case count, and the fact that usually a lot of people would come to the hospital with signs and symptoms. Are we seeing people coming in with those signs and symptoms asking to be tested? So we, we have a lot of people who are coming with the symptoms. There's a, there's a section of the people who are actually scared to take the test and won't even come back again when they have to take the test or you're calling them for the test. And there are others who are quite grateful if they have the opportunity to take the test. So mm. the fear is going up as the numbers are going up, as well as some people who are also fueling conspiracy theories as well that these figures are just, people need their figures to go up for some government propaganda or something. Mm -hmm. So yesterday, for example, I had to talk with someone who was thinking, well, the positive was because we want more numbers to go up. And I explained to him what an increased number means to us or me, a health worker. So yeah. um, we have people who are coming, but there are others who are quite reluctant or scared to go for the test because they don't, they, they, we tell them there's a high probability it will be positive based on the symptoms you're showing. Mm. But then because I don't know whether it's a form of denial, they don't want to actually know it. So they would rather stay at home. I've, I've had, I've been blocked by a patient before because I would kept on calling to come for the test. Yeah. So we have a section of people who do that. What could be the reason? Is it fear of death? Is it fear of stigmatization? What exactly? So mainly it's fear. Fear of someone will tell you that what you don't know won't kill you. But mm. that's quite false. It's, it's quite false. Um, it's good to know, then you know what you can do about it. So fear is a driving factor here. Most of the people fear and the fear of stigmatization. Yeah. So that, that plays a major role. But do we at least have psychologists that speak to some of these people who walk in with symptoms just before they take the test? or maybe right after, just so they can allay those fears? So depending on how the person takes it, usually after the test is when the psychologist will come back. If there are some people, you see how they're reacting, you, you can invite the psychologist in to talk to the person, even before the test is taken, and then after the test is taken, just to help allay the fears of the person. Okay, but could it also be because now we're hearing that 
uh, you know, the hospitals could also or is also a hot spot for COVID-19. And so maybe that's what's preventing people from wanting to come in. Well, the thing is, if you're not feeling well, it's still the same hospital you're going to go to. Yeah, but if you'd realize that there are a lot of people who'd rather, you know, opt for the online services than physically walking into a hospital. And again, maybe it's because we're recording higher numbers amongst health workers. Could that be the so reason? All right. And uh, that's... Hello, I didn't get that. Doctor. Okay, yes. Working. We can hear you. Carry on. I didn't get what you said. The network cut. Okay, what I'm saying is that could the fear also be as a result of the fact that health workers have recorded a lot of, you know, COVID-19 cases. And so now the conversation is that the hospital could be the another epicenter for COVID-19. And maybe that's why people are refusing to walk into the hospital to get tested or probably walk in, but are still scared of getting tested. Well, that, that's, that's, that's one of the factors because um, out there there are lots of health workers are testing positive. Um, it's still under, um, in court investigation where whether it's from the patients or where the exposure is being made. Now, people are actually scared. Some people are scared that they may pick it, not from health workers, but from other patients who may be positive that they may be exposed to. That's mm. one of the major um, fears. Because for the health workers, they know they usually put measures in place and everything. But then the next patient to them is a person positive. What if the next patient to them turns out positive? Are they exposed? Most of the concerns that they raise when they come to the hospitals are in relation to the patients next to them or the, their colleague patients, if I can put it that way. Mm. If that's the case, and I'm just, you know, veering off a little to talk about health workers. What is being done to ensure that you all are protected? Because we have had constant reports of health workers uh, waiting for their test results, yet going to work. There was a doctor who mentioned that eventually he tested positive, but even when his sample was taken, he still had to work. And so only God knows how many people he may have infected whilst waiting for his results that took a number of days. What has been done to protect you? So first of all, um, I think um, something has been done concerning that where once you are tested, you stay at home and wait for the results. Basically, that whole situation came about when the, first of all, our health system is already overburdened. Even before COVID came up, it was overburdened. Now, people were testing and then were going off. Then other people will come in sick, but there'll be no um, doctor or health worker there to attend to them. And that will also bring more issues because the patient may not necessarily even have COVID, but then there's no one to take care of the person and the person can end up dying. Mm -hmm. So it was out of necessity when that thing had to come up because patient delta ratio is terrible here. Yeah. And whether we like it or not, we, we are doctors of work and there's more patients, the, the number of patients, we supersede the number of doctors. So on the usual, that is what happens. But Would now you... in the case that you can have like six or five doctors go on quarantine and it's left with only two people mm. manning an emergency that's supposed to be run by six doctors, it becomes a bit um, difficult. Yeah. Because aside from um, fatigue of these, um, these health workers or these doctors, the quality of care also decreases because they are human. Mm -hmm. So the quality of care that's being given also decreases because they are human and they are being overburdened and overworked. So yeah. the, the care being given may not be what they could have given if they were in their right and they're in the right state and everything. Okay. And overburdening them over also puts them at a greater risk as well. All right. So that is why that came up. But things are being put in place to help people to, if you reshuffle and move people to a different department to boost mm. Um, boost up the number or something. So, all right. One more thing before I let you go, and back to the issue of testing. Of the ones having symptoms. All right. Back to the issue of testing. So, last week, COVID nineteen three sixty showed a video of a pastor who said he had gotten wind of the fact that some test kits um, were infected, and so he was admonishing people to refuse uh, testing when the contact traces come around. I don't know if you've seen that video, but you are a health worker. Tell us, is it possible for these test kits to be infected? And if that's the case, what are we going to do to assure people out there that if indeed they come out to test, they will not rather be infected as a result of using that test kit? So currently in Ghana, what we use, we are still doing the real-time PCR. So you take our testing, you bring either a nasal um, a swab in your throat yeah. or um, you bring up sputum. 
that's flames in quotes. Yeah. And then you take it. Then they extract the DNA from that, amplify it. They extract the RNA, amplify it before it goes through the. Okay. Uh, before. Hello? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Carry on. Okay. Before it goes through the machine for it to detect for the DNA before it's tested. So I actually don't get the basis, the scientific basis for that. Usually those test kits being infected, I don't know how, what he means by that, because from the process I, mm. I, I explain now how, I don't get it. Because once the DNA is extracted and amplified, they go into the drum and once it detects the um, COVID DNA, then it's run singly, then they determine a positive result based on the DNA. So I don't know how your test kits can be infected or I don't know. But, but I mean, I, I in some countries, sort of test kits have been infected. It was on the news. Some countries rejected these test kits. And I wish we could talk about that. Unfortunately, my director is counting me down. So maybe we'll have time to discuss this um, further so you can further assure us of how test kits cannot be infected, like you're saying. But thank you so much for speaking to us this morning. You're welcome. Dr. Emmanuel Amankra, and he is the lead at the Lekma Isolation Center.